Okay, so now that we did limits, right? So we know as x changes, we can relate that to how y changes in a function. Okay. Now we want to do a little bit more than that. We want to find the rate of change. Okay, so right now we just, so far what we've been doing is well, as x goes towards a particular number, where is y going? And we can determine this. More than this, I want to do this now. As y changes a little bit, at the same time the x is changing, what is the ratio? What's the rate of change of y respect to x? Now this translates into finding the slope, right? Find the slope between two points, right? Let's say here, the two points, but then you make this point come close to this one or vice versa. Okay, maybe that was confusing. Let me draw a function, okay? So let's say you have a function like this. I want to know the rate of change of this function at this value, um, let's say a. Okay, so you should have done this in advanced functions. If I asked you to find the rate of change from A to B, here's how you can do that. You find the slope between these two, right? These two points. So basically you find this slope here. That's the rate of change from A to B on this function, the average rate of change. So okay, rate of change. The rate of change yes, in physics you'll do this too, from A to B. So this is going to be, you need this, delta Y, delta stands for in physics change, and delta X. Okay, what's delta y? Do you see the delta y? So that right there. With b and a function, it's going to be f at b. That right there will be f at a, right? So it's going to be f at b minus f at a. Over delta x is b minus a. Okay, this, so this is the average rate of change from A to B. So look, in real life, you know, if this was, for example, um, time. Right, so if your x-axis was time so, and its distance, the slope represents what? Right, speed, right, velocity, right? So if you find this, this is the change in the velocity at given from A to B, from A to B, right? If it was like time versus money, then how much money you made over a given period of time. So instead of finding out what's happening at a given interval, what humans like they wanted to find out, right, was I don't want to know the overall change. I want to know what's exactly happening at that exact point. Okay, I want to find that instantaneous rate of change. So we call this slope. slope of instantaneous rate of change. So, do you guys agree that the instant rate, uh, instant, instantaneous rate of change will be represented with the slope that's tangent to the curve? Okay, so the way that this line is changing in terms of its slope, like delta y and delta x, that's the rate of change at that exact point. Okay, so how do you find such a such a rate of change? Here's how we do it. See this value b? Oops. On the function, you bring that function, so that value approach a. Okay, so instead of taking a point there, you take a point there, 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 closer. 
right? So what's going to happen is this is the secant, right? If you take a point closer, it's going to become this. Even closer, here. Closer, 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 it's going to approach the actual instantaneous rate of change. Okay. So you make B approach A, then the secant, which is the average rate of change, will become approach tangent. So you say as B approaches A, secant approaches uh, the tangent. Okay. Now this is okay, but the, there's a more popular way to label this, and that's this. You label that A, and you label this distance H, and B becomes A plus H. Okay. And this value here, instead of becoming f at b, it becomes f at a plus h. That's still f at a. So if you write this, uh, the average rate of change, right, average change is f at a plus h minus f at a, all over a plus h minus a is just h. Okay, this is an expression of slope, right? Slope between A and B. Now, if you make limit H approaches zero, meaning this H, you make it infinitely small, shrink it. What happens then? This is no longer average rate of change. This is instantaneous rate of change. So it's, it becomes a change at that particular point where it approaches it so that it's insignificant, the difference. Okay. So in this limit section, Right, we have y equals f at x, okay. And we, you know, we manipulate this, study this, plug numbers in in advanced function. In calculus, we study this. Instead of just plugging a number in here get, and getting an output, we didn't plug in a number in there. We made an x value approach a particular number or infinite, and we study that y approaches another number. This time, what we're doing is. Okay, we use this and we come up with a, another expression, so another function for slope. So let's call that s, okay, s as a function of, this time, what is it a function of? Meaning the, the, the slope, right? What does it change depending on what changes? It's not x. Well, it is kind of x, but yeah, in this case it's h. So it's a function of h and that was f at a plus h so this s was was made with f okay like this and then as we set now this is a just normal function right now it's a no normal for formula typically in like up to grade advanced functions we will plug numbers in but in calculus we, we can use limits. We make h approach to zero, then s set h becomes slope at x equals a. Slope at a single point. Okay. So high school calculus, right? Which is called differential calculus, is all about studying this function. We're gonna just study the crap out of that function. That's what it is. Or in different case scenario.